computing the future. Rachel put down her pen and closed her eyes. She felt tired, very tired. She looked up at the clock, 4.30. Good. There was enough time to get to the newspaper office before five o'clock. And she wanted the advertisement to go into Friday's newspaper. Then, well, she didn't know what was going to happen next. It was a wonderful idea, and it was a new idea. She picked up the finished advertisement and walked through the office door into the computer room. The computer room was always busy. Fourteen people worked there. Rachel smiled and said hello to everyone as she walked across the room. Long pieces of blue paper were coming out of the computers. The operators were checking them carefully, then putting them into envelopes. Rachel's company used computers to do horoscopes for people. You sent the date, time and place of your birthday to the company Computer Astrology Limited and the computers could do a horoscope for you. Rachel's boss, Mervyn Astra, started the company three years before. <laughs> Mervyn Astra wasn't his real name, of course, but it sounded good. It sounded good in the newspaper and magazine advertisements. His real name was Brian Smith, but only a few people knew that. Rachel was his assistant. She didn't like Mervyn very much. He was a short, fat man with glasses and very long hair. Mervyn drove an orange Rolls Royce everywhere. There were gold stars all over it. It's good advertising, Mervyn always said. Anyway, when Rachel had the new idea, Mervyn said, All right, you can try it. On Friday morning, Rachel got up early. She was waiting for the newspaper. It arrived at eight o'clock. Rachel hurried to the table and opened it. She was looking for her advertisement. There it was, on page seven. Rachel smiled. She didn't really believe in palmistry. She thought it was nonsense. But she thought astrology was nonsense too. And the advertisement wasn't a lie. Not really. Mervyn was a wonderful computer programmer. And the computer program really did have all the information that they could find about palmistry. It could read the photographs with a special video camera, and it could compare them to thousands and thousands of pictures in the program. The program was very expensive. Mervyn worked on it for a long time. Rachel was a little worried. She wanted the idea to be successful. Mervyn could get angry very quickly, and he hated losing money. She read the advertisement again and laughed. Rachel Grant, palmistry consultant. That was funny. It was Mervyn's idea, of course. Do you want to know about the future? Palmistry is the science of telling the future from people's hands. It's a very old science. You can learn about your life and about important things that will happen to you. You can learn about your thoughts, future romances and your future wealth. We use modern technology to give you a forecast of the future. Our computer has a special program with information from all the best fortune tellers in the world. Are you interested? Just send a photograph of your left hand with a cheque for £10 made out to Computer Astrology Limited to Rachel Grant, Palmistry Consultant, Computer Astrology Limited, P. 
P.O. Box 75, Lazenhurst, L.E. 6, 4.I.Q. Don't forget to write your name on the back of the photograph. Computer Astrology Limited, Director Mervyn Astra. It's all nonsense. Rachel didn't need to worry. The idea was successful. It was more successful than the computer horoscopes. A week later, they had thousands of photographs of hands. They put the advertisement in more newspapers and magazines. Mervyn had to buy more computers, and a month later, there were 30 people working in the computer room. Mervyn bought a yellow Cadillac and put pictures of hands all over it. He used to drive the Rolls-Royce during the week and the Cadillac at weekends. He was a very happy man. Mervyn gave Rachel a lot more money, but she wasn't happy. She was embarrassed by her job, palmistry consultant. Three months ago it was funny. Now it was embarrassing. When people said, What do you do? She usually said, Oh, I work with computers. One day, Rachel was at a party. She was speaking to a woman. They were talking about sport when the woman asked her name. Rachel told her. Suddenly, the woman said, Are you the Rachel Grant? You know, the palmistry consultant. Uh, yes, yes I am, said Rachel. Why, have you heard about me? Nonsense! Rachel smiled. Why do you think so? she asked. Well, said the woman, think about it. It tells you how long people will live, she said. Yes, said the woman. I don't know, said Rachel. I've never thought about it. Well, said the woman, think about it for a minute. No one wrote about it. That's interesting, said Rachel. But maybe they didn't want to tell people about it. And it was a long time ago. What about the Vietnam War and Cambodia? What about Ethiopia? I can give you a lot of modern examples, too. Fortune tellers don't usually tell bad news, said Rachel. People don't want to know. Frightened of the future. The next day, Rachel was sitting in her office. She was thinking about the woman at the party. She looked through some books on palmistry. She had a lot of books. Mark was one of the computer programmers. He worked with Mervyn on the palmistry program. Mark looked surprised. Yes, he said. We can do that. It's easy. But why? What are you looking for? I'm not sure, said Rachel. I've got an idea. Maybe it's a silly idea, but I want to compare all the photographs. Maybe we can find something in all of them. Something about the future. You mean, you mean a lot of short lifelines? I hope not, said Rachel. But it's interesting, isn't it? I want you to compare different towns and cities. Compare them with each other and compare them with the country areas. I want statistics for different areas of the country. Some interesting result. A few days later, Mark walked into Rachel's office. Mark looked down at the desk. Nothing, really, he said. In most areas, we've got photographs of hands with long lifelines, middle-sized lifelines, and short lifelines. We didn't learn very much. You see, we haven't got enough photographs. We'd need a thousand or more from each area of the country before we could do any real statistical analysis. But 
We've had thousands and thousands of photographs, said Rachel. Yes, but that's from everywhere in the country, said Mark. Wait a minute, said Rachel. You said in most areas there are long lifelines, middle-sized lifelines and short lifelines. You didn't say in all areas. Yes, and it's enough to do a statistical analysis. Look at the list. These are all towns about the same size as Chatford. There are 22 photographs from Norwich, 108 from Oxford, 93 from Bournemouth, 105 from Torquay, 86 from Brighton, 42 from Exeter. It sounds silly, but more than 75% have got short lifelines, said Mark. Did that happen in any other town? Not really. All the photographs from Norwich had long lifelines. Then I looked at the addresses on the back of the photographs. We only had 22, but 20 were all from the same hospital for old people. I looked at each age group, under 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40. The lifelines were shorter than average in all of them. I mean, they weren't very, very short. Were they shorter or longer than mine? asked Rachel. She showed Mark the palm of her left hand. Mark looked at it carefully. Er, uh, they were about the same, he said. Rachel felt cold suddenly. None of it's true. Mervyn wasn't very happy that day. On the way to work, he had a small accident in the Rolls Royce. He drove into the back of another car. That evening, he was going to be on a television programme about fortune tellers. I said, go away! It's important, Mervyn. Rachel opened the door and went in. Yes, what do you want? said Mervyn. Well, Mervyn, I had an idea. I'm not interested in your ideas, said Mervyn. You were interested in my idea for computer palmistry, said Rachel. OK, sit down and tell me, but hurry, I'm very busy. Rachel told him about the woman at the party, and he laughed. <laughs> Does it matter, he said. Well, yes, she said. I wanted the computer to compare the photographs from different towns. We don't pay you to play with a computer, said Mervyn angrily. Anyway, you aren't a computer programmer. You couldn't do this. Someone helped you. Who was it? Mark, said Rachel. But he did the work in his own time. He used my computer and he used my electricity, said Mervyn. Can I show you what we found, said Rachel. She showed the printouts to Mervyn. He got angrier and angrier. Rachel, he said, this is all nonsense. Nobody can tell you about the future. You Chatford. Rachel left computer astrology on March the 19th. She soon found another job as a reporter for the Daily Echo, a newspaper in London. She was a reporter before she worked for Mervyn. But she never forgot about Mark's computer printouts, and she never forgot about Chatford. One day, she was talking to her boss at the newspaper, and she told him about the lifelines. He laughed. Do you believe it, Rachel? he said. There's a good story here. Write it. Rachel smiled. OK, I will. I'll go there next week. Rachel arrived in Chatford by train on Wednesday the 20th of September. She got a taxi to the Royal Hotel. She walked into the hotel and stopped. A short, fat man with glasses and very long hair was standing there. 
He was shouting at the girl behind the desk. Do you know who I am? He shouted. My brother owns the Chatford Evening Star. Rachel smiled at the girl behind the desk. Rachel Grant, she said, from the Daily Echo. I phoned yesterday. Ah, yes, said the girl. Ms. Grant, a room with bath. You're in room 437. I've got your key. Wait here. Someone will take your case to the room. Terrible news. On the morning of September the 21st, Mark woke early. He couldn't sleep. He had dreams all night about Rachel and the computer printouts. At 10.35 yesterday evening, there was an atomic explosion at the Chatford nuclear power station. Thousands of people are dead. The army has closed all roads round Chatford, and there is no news from the town. Nobody knows why the power station exploded, or how many people have died. Our reporter, Rachel Grant, was in the town when the power station exploded. The army has asked people to stay in their homes in an area 50 miles round Chatford. The Prime Minister will speak on television and radio at 9 o'clock this morning. Mark put down the newspaper. He was crying. He went to a cupboard and took out the box of computer printouts. He looked at them for a moment. Then he walked over to the telephone. He had to phone the Daily Echo. He found the phone book and looked for the number. There it was, 0171 131 1676. Then he stopped and thought. He picked up the box of printouts, took them into the garden and burned them. He never told anybody about the lifelines. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, share and subscribe to the channel to see the latest videos. Thank you.